Hi guys, welcome back to episode number 123 of Small Engines Questions and Answers. So again, a big welcome to all my new subscribers and hopefully the weather is getting better where you are. We've had pretty cold weather here for this month in April. It's been snowing and raining and it's cold just like winter it seems. So hopefully it's going to warm up soon. Here's the small Husqvarna 136 that you saw in my previous Q&A. Just so you guys know, I finally got it going and I did make a video on it. All I need to do is edit it and post it on YouTube soon. And also some of you guys saw this uh, green part here in my last Q&A. I did not talk about it, but some of you guys saw it in the background and were asking about it. Well, what this is, is the front drive system for a John Deere 650 utility tractor. It's a 1986 and it's a 4x4 tractor. Actually what had happened is one of the bearings had broken inside over here on one side for the wheel and it damaged the gear. Here it is. It probably would work this way but we ordered another one. What had happened is the bearing had broken to shreds here and the shaft was on an angle so it didn't work anymore. Actually the wheel was jamming up on that side I think or it just wasn't working for the 4x4. So it's a fairly heavy part. It's well built. It wasn't too bad working on it because the bolts are big. Everything's big so nothing was seized which I was very surprised about and I threw a coat of paint on there while I was doing the repairs. I am missing however the gear for here. This gear is no longer available so we had to order a used one. It still has not come in yet. So it's a bit of a pain waiting for that when you've got everything else put back together. So I'm hoping it's going to show up soon so the rest of this can be put back together. It's not my tractor by the way, it's a friend of mine. So I'm hoping this summer we can at least make a small video of the actual tractor that this part goes on. And my first question today, a YouTuber asked me, is it normal when I put a new chain on my chainsaw for it to get loose quickly? Well, the answer to that is yes, because the chain's brand new. It's going to get a bit loose to a certain point, and then it won't be getting loose as quickly. I've noticed that when I put a new chain on my own chainsaws, you put it on, it's fairly tight. Then in no time, you need to readjust it again. So don't worry about that. It's perfectly normal, and after a while, it's not going to get loose as quickly. However though, whether your chain is new or not, it is normal for it to get loose from time to time, especially after you use it for a little while. It will inevitably get a bit loose and you will have to readjust it no matter what. So you don't want your chain on too tight and you don't want it on too loose either. I just leave a bit of slack like this. Another question I got from a YouTuber the other day is, will my chainsaw still run even though the crankshaft bearings are worn out? Well, my answer to that is it probably will run, but it won't run properly. What I have here is a chainsaw crankcase just to show you what I'm talking about and where the bearings are on each side of the saw. They're behind the oil seal located right here. If the crank bearings worn out, what's going to happen is it's going to wear that seal prematurely. It's going to become egg shaped and then you're going to get an air leak between the seal and the crankshaft and that's going to cause your saw not to run properly. The reason for that is because you will not be getting enough air to the carburetor to make it run properly. So even though it's not falling apart totally yet, you're going to have issues. You may put a new carburetor kit, adjust the carburetor, and it still won't run properly. Now usually if your bearings are shot, you're going to be able to grab the crankshaft and move it from side to side. In this case, the bearing is still good on this side, so I'm not able to move it you would want your shaft to be tight like this inside the bearings on the crankcase. But if they are shot, like I said, it's going to move from side to side. Even slightly will cause the seal to wear out prematurely. So it doesn't have to be too sloppy in order to cause damage to that seal. What I recommend is if you have a problem with the bearings in your chainsaws to take it apart. Replace both bearings even if you only have problems with one side because the other side will not be too far behind in letting you down in the future. Also, if you're going to replace bearings on your chainsaw, do make sure to replace both crank seals while you're at it. It's a lot of work to do this, so like I said, make sure you replace everything properly. Also, you may want to make sure that the crankcase here is sealed properly as well. Now, on some lower end saws, you just basically take the power head out of the saw. You don't have to separate the tank here like on a bigger saw like this. And what I have here is an engine block from a steel MS-180 chainsaw. 
and as you can see it's going to be a different procedure you will not have to split apart a whole engine crankcase all you do is take off the four torque screws pull everything out and replace the bearings and the seals in my next question a youtuber asked me for tips for repairing oil leaks well first of all I want to mention that when you take apart parts that contain oil in them make sure to put a new gasket when you put them back together also what I use is a good gasket maker that's resistant to oil and gas also make sure to torque the bolts properly on the parts you're putting back together because that can have an effect on whether it's going to leak oil or not also you want to make sure that you tighten up the bolts evenly so if you're putting back a sump cover on an engine make sure you crisscross the pattern of tightening the bolts so for example if you were putting on a sump cover like this you would want to make sure to tighten up the bolts in a diagonal pattern so basically what I do is I just snug them up then I go back around again in a diagonal pattern and tighten them up to the specified torque setting also what I do when I put a sump cover like this back on even though I'm putting a new gasket is I put a bit of gasket maker on each side of the new gasket and then put the parts together I just find that it makes absolutely sure that you're not going to have a leak in the future also by using gasket maker if you have a damaged surface it can fill in the cracks and make absolutely sure it's not going to leak so let's say for example this cover was leaking oil and you wanted to fix that leak without taking the cover off chances are it's probably just going to be a temporary fix I've seen people put some gasket maker right where the oil is leaking sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't if you're going to do that make sure that the surface is very clean or else the gasket maker will come off very easily so in the end the best solution is to remove the part or parts put a new gasket and put them back together what a youtuber asked me is if the threads for the bolts that hold the ignition module on my saw are stripped can i drill it bigger and retap it well in some cases you can but oftentimes you cannot the reason for that is because you don't have too much metal here to deal with so if these holes are stripped you're better off to get a Healy coil and follow the instructions for that what can often happen is if you drill bigger you can end up breaking all the excess metal here and before you know it you've got a really big hole and you can't screw anything at all in there sometimes too you may have to drill the hole in the ignition module itself bigger the holes are not that big to start with depending on your saw so you got to take that into consideration as well you also don't want to drill any deeper than the existing threads because you may cause major damage you may go into the oil tank for example on this saw here now every chainsaw is going to be different on some saws you may be able to before you do that though just check to see where the threads are and how much metal is actually around them what I've done in the past that has worked is I've used a screw that was slightly longer because only the top threads were stripped. Now I didn't go deeper than the existing hole, but there was enough threads underneath the stripped ones for it to keep the ignition module on there tight. Now if you put in a new screw that's longer and you can't screw it in anymore, then don't force it you might want to put a few washers on top if it's a bit too long that way you can still grab into the good threads but not cause any damage so if that fails like i said just get a Healy coil for the specific hole that you have and follow the instructions a youtuber told me the other day he took out his pressure washer from storage during the winter time and now he starts it up and there's no pressure coming from the gun He's wondering what's causing that. Well, what could have happened is maybe the unit wasn't put away properly. There could have been a bit of water left in the pump. It froze up in the winter and caused damage. It could also be the spray gun as well that's damaged. What I would do first is try another spray gun. Hopefully you have a spare one sitting at home to do this. And after trying a new gun or another gun that you know works, if you still don't get pressure, then it's definitely due to the pump. Sometimes these pumps can cost just as much as buying a whole new pressure washer. So before spending two to three hundred dollars or more on a pump, just go and check your local stores to see what the prices are on the pressure washers there. In Canada here sometimes you can go to princessauto.com which would be like Harbor Freight in the States and you can buy a pump for around two hundred bucks.
Sometimes that makes it worth to repair and sometimes not because I've seen these pressure washers go for about 300 bucks. So you got to kind of figure out what you want to do. There is a good warranty though on the pumps at Princess Auto here. Also if you buy a new pressure washer you're going to get some warranty with that as well. But from my experience all the problems I get from pressure washers with no pressure anymore are due to the pump themselves. Unless it's a very minor problem I don't repair pressure washer pumps. I basically tell people to invest in a new pump or a whole new pressure washer system itself. I've worked on pumps before just to see them fail a short time after that so it was a complete waste of time and money and also people will get aggravated if they spend money into something only to have it fail a short time later. The best suggestion I can make to you is always make sure you've got the screen where your garden hose hooks up to the pump if you do use an external source of water, like from a pond or something, again, make sure the screen is there because it doesn't take much sand to ruin your pump. Also, if you lend it to somebody, make absolutely sure that they know about that. And don't run the unit without water connected to it for too long because you can damage the pump as well. So that'll be it for today's Q&A. Thanks for coming by to watch this episode today. Make sure to subscribe and you can come back and see me in my next Q&A in two weeks.